Yo, what is up guys? It is Bumfries, back with another episode of Entitled Parents. Today's episode is gonna be a banger and I know you're gonna love this one. Let's aim for a whopping 14 likes on today's video. I know it's a lot, but I think we can do it. If you're new, hit that subscribe button below. Then once you've liked the video, all you need to do is sit back, relax, and get annoyed at some Entitled Parents. For some context, this just happened and I'm still shaking about it. I have an 11 week old purebred corgi with his tail still attached. This will be important later. Tail docking is still legal in the US and I'm not an advocate unless deemed necessary. He has been my bread and butter through some tough times. I would gladly take a bullet for him to get those kisses. He doesn't have all of his shots yet, but he does need a lot of exercise. I live in an apartment without a yard, so I walk around my building a few times without a leash since he never leaves my side. This time I had him on a leash and we walked to collect the Bezos mail. This was his first time exploring out this far. I wanted to make sure he was kept close and out of the way. On the way to the leasing office, I didn't see anyone around and he was having a ball exploring the new places. When we made it to the parcel pending place, which is a package hub for tenants, I collected my package and started the trip home. Suddenly a family drives up in swimming gear for the pool. I thought nothing of it and picked up my puppy to carry him with my package in my other arm. Almost immediately, the kid rushes up to me and the pup. He couldn't have been more than four or five years old. I lifted my leg to try and stop the kid and explained, please keep your distance. My puppy needs space to keep him safe. The kid didn't listen and approached closer. I yelled out louder, no, back up, to the point where the mum heard me this time. The mum rushed her way over, demanding that I apologize for yelling at her boy and to let her son pet my husky puppy. I corrected her that my puppy's a corgi who hasn't had his boosters and to keep him safe to please back up. And I went on to say that I just want to go home. This mum got all up in my face and tried to yank the pup away from my arm. I could hear him yapping in fear, so I had a knee jerk reaction to pull him closer and turn around. I said to her, back off, you're scaring him and if you get closer again, I will use defensive force to protect myself and my puppy. You and your child need to back off and leave me alone. The mum went into hysterics and the kids started crying. The boy tried to reach up and grab his tail and pulled on it. He was yanked through my arm and dropped to the ground. I screamed as loud as I could as both of them tried to pick him up. I panicked with my keys and sprayed the mum with pepper spray. They both started screaming their heads off. I picked up my puppy and ran home. I did a check on my puppy and he's shaken up quite a bit. I changed my clothes and held him close to soothe him. I plan to only keep him outside around the building from now on. For some clarification on some things. I was raised in the military and surrounded by cops. They taught me that if I want to use defense, to first warn them loudly that I will use defense measures so that anyone else nearby may be able to hear. As far as leashing goes, I will keep him on a leash on his walks around the complex from now on. My complex is usually not this active and I only let him out on the lowest activity times throughout the day. I was told to not let him near anyone that is a stranger and not let him walk in public stores until he has another booster. This was the only time being out this way. He was leashed in this instance, especially while carrying him. As for fear of him getting sick, I do have a vet appointment coming up to give him his boosters and a checkup. You know what? It's one thing for a four to five year old to see a puppy and think, oh my gosh, that's so cute. I wanna go up and pat it because you know what? They're four or five years old. I don't think there's a single person that wouldn't understand if a four or five year old saw a cute puppy and wanted to pat it. But from this story, this isn't just any normal four or five year old. This is a four or five year old that is a product of a clear entitled mum who thinks that her precious little entitled kid can get whatever they want whenever they want it with no consequences. I would like to think this is common sense, but if someone explicitly says you cannot touch my puppy, I need you to stay away, then you don't touch their puppy. It should be as simple as that, but when it comes to entitled parents, nothing is ever simple. After the last time I stood up to my mother when she threatened to spank me, she seemed to get more wary that if she did try, it'd end very badly for her. So she mostly just yelled at me and didn't lay a finger on me again until the events of wanting my house some years later. I thought nothing of it and just continued with my usual routine of school and odd jobs. My 15th birthday was right around the corner and my dad presented me with an engine kit for my bike to help me get around town in. He said that I would be better off saving for a car than a scooter and that this would do in the meantime. 
I ended up agreeing with his logic and kept saving for a car. A few days later though, I found a pamphlet for a military school while sweeping grass off the back patio and mowing the lawn. It was on the ground and under a chair near where my mum liked to sit and drink wine. I had a bad feeling that she was cooking up some kind of crazy scheme, so I waited until my dad got home to show him what I'd found. He was pretty mad but didn't jump to conclusions. So, he went to see my mum with a pamphlet and asked her about it and said, Honey, what is this? And my mum goes white at the side of the pamphlet and says, It's nothing. I've never seen it before. My dad says, Really? Because if you were planning on trying to send Craggle to military school, you know I wouldn't allow it. That's when my mum broke her facade and yelled, He needs to learn some discipline. He locks his door all the time and I can't even spank him anymore because he's too big. This is the only way I have left to punish him for being a disobedient brat. My dad responds by saying, Craggle did nothing wrong when he stood up to you because of your favoritism. If anything, our daughter is the brat because of you and the way you spoil her and let her get away with stealing things from her brother. As far as I'm concerned, this discussion about sending Craggle to military school is over. And if you try to send him, then so help me, I'll bring the hammer down in any way I can. My mum responded saying, well I guess this whole family is just going to take away what little power I have left in this house then. If I have nothing, I may as well be nothing. So my dad says, stop being so dramatic that Craggle is growing up to be his own man now with his own money. My mum then just stormed out of the room. The next morning before school, I saw her furiously trying to stuff something into the kitchen trash bin. I waited for her to leave for work and dug out what she was trying to hide. It was an application for military school entirely filled out in her handwriting. It required the signatures of both parents or legal guardians on it, and there were two signatures on the paper. I recognized my mum's, but the other looked like a pitiful attempt at trying to replicate my dad's. He prided himself on his smooth and complex signature, and there's no way that my mum could copy it without looking like a fraud. I guess she realized that after she was confronted and gave up on trying to send me away. I kept the papers and showed them to my dad later. He was mad, but figured she'd done that already and let it go. But he filed the papers in his office just in case. A few months later, it got out that my mum was having an affair with an old ex-boyfriend of hers from high school. This was the last straw for my dad and he filed for divorce. I went to live with him months later after he bought another house. He sped up the divorce pretty quickly by pulling out the military school papers that my mum had forged his signature on. And it wasn't just that. He also had evidence that she forged his signature on at least one credit card application and one one other thing that I don't recall. That made my mum fear being arrested for fraud and they went through court pretty fast because she agreed to most of his terms. Mum got the house though because dad didn't want it, but she also demanded alimony and child support because my sister unsurprisingly chose to stay living with her. The judge awarded my mum the child support and a minimum amount of alimony for a decade of monthly payments. The alimony just basically covered my sister's allowance anyway. Mum was pretty mad about that and threatened to take him back to court, but he held all those four signatures over her head for years to make her back down. On the day I left to live in my dad's new house, my sister stuck her tongue out at me and smugly said, Mummy told her that she was a princess and the more deserving sibling, and that she was the reason why I was leaving the house. I just shook my head and told her to think what she wants because I didn't care anymore then walked out the front door, finally feeling as free as a bird. My relationship with my sister when she came to visit dad's house once a week only got worse after that until finally we stopped talking altogether for years. I didn't really care to visit my mum's house after I moved out and she'd pretty much gutted my old room for a home office anyway. Halfway through reading the story, I was starting to think that there were some more serious problems than this just being an entitled mum, and noticed a few signs of some pretty serious marital issues between the mum and the dad. It almost seems like the entitled mum has some kind of resentment towards the son and possibly even the father, and honestly, sounds like something that's straight out of a Disney story. Sounds like everything turned out alright for the OP in the end, and honestly, that's all you can ask for, because if you had to continue to grow up with an entitled mum like this, I can imagine things being a lot worse. Okay, this just happened about 30 minutes ago and I am home now. I'm gonna give a little bit of history about me, a 39 year old female and my kiddo, a 12 year old male. My late husband is of German descent and I'm African American, but I have light skin. So when I had our son, even though he's biracial, he could definitely pass as a Caucasian child. Okay, onto the story. My kiddo has been stressed since his father passed away suddenly last year and I've been doing my best to keep him smiling. His favorite thing to do, as well as many kids, is to go to GameStop and spend his allowance. 
While we were in the store, an entitled mother came into the store with her son. Now, the son wasn't entitled, so it wasn't a crazy duo. So far, everything was going great and my kiddo picked out everything that he wanted and was ready to check out. I let him go to the register and he is given everything that is needed to check out. When his items were totaled, he was a little short. So I walked over and said I would pay for the rest of his purchase. Now, I understand that this does sound like someone being nice and helping someone out, so I didn't get mad at first when the entitled mother said, wow, that's such a nice thing you're doing for a stranger's kid. I turned around and smiled and said, oh no, this is my son. I'm just paying for the remaining balance. As I was turning around, the entitled mum tells me, you don't have to lie. How could he be your son? He is white and you're not. Look, since you're in such a nice mood, why don't you pay for my son's games too? I looked at her and just flatly said no and finished the transaction. As I finished and started to walk away with my son, she yells, um, excuse me, what about my son's games? Didn't I tell you to pay for them? I am completely shocked and was about to say something when the owner, whom we've known for about six years, told her to shut up and leave us alone before he calls the police. I took this cue and my son and I left. As I was driving away, my son asked me what that was about and I just said it was a Karen being a Karen. Man, people are so freaking weird. Well, I guess that does it. I guess today's episode now has a bit of everything. Entitled parents, marriage breakdowns, downright ignorance. I mean, today's just got the works. Seriously, it just goes to show that these entitled parents come in all shapes and sizes and they're not just the exclusive, I'll give my son your Nintendo Switch. They also come in people like this who are just so obnoxious and entitled that it drives you crazy. Sadly, my entitled parent run-in was my sister. She was visiting with her kids, and I suggested they pick a Wii game to play from the basket. The youngest rummages around and pulls out a box of buckyballs. You know those magnetic balls that were taken off the market? And I say, whoops, you can't play with those, and I take them away. My sister gets all, well, why not? And I explain that he's five, so he's too young from when they were legal, and now they are off the market. She starts to get annoyed with me and says, he knows not to put things in his mouth. I keep saying no, and she goes on about how I don't trust him and I probably don't like him. Her final salvo was why did I still have them if they are so dangerous, and why can my son play with them? I sigh dramatically and say, my son is 20 and I'm no longer responsible to keep him safe. Remember last story how I said this episode has everything? Well now this episode has everything. On top of everything I said in the last story, we now have an entitled parent who's willing to put their kid in harm's way solely out of principle and allow them to play with a dangerous toy. I mean, your child's five years old. Take some responsibility for your child and do the right thing. You should be looking out for your kid in the first place and not putting them in harm's way. But if your brother says, look, this product is not okay for your five-year-old child, accept it and move on and don't argue just to prove a point. And that is that for today's episode of Entitled Parents. If you did enjoy, don't forget to hit the like button down below. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. There are two hand-selected videos on your screen right now, which I suggest you watch if you want to see a bit more bum fruits. Make sure to hit that subscribe link as well. I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you tomorrow for some Choosing Beggars. Bye.